Good evening, homesteaders. Welcome to our homestead. Tonight, we are gonna be doing some more spring planting, and we are gonna be doing it in the new garden bed that we've been preparing over the last couple of years. So our cover crops should be all killed off under here. They should have aerated that soil, opened it up, and fed the microbiology underneath. We're gonna pull this back, and we're gonna plant a very special crop, something new to us, and that's an upland rice. Let's get going. So we did take a peek under here a few weeks ago to see how it was doing and it was looking good. Let's see how it is now and if I can plant because I really need to get this rice in the ground. Well, it looks good. It looks like our cover crops are killed off. We've got an issue with some gophers and some ants, but it should be ready for us to plant our rice. Now this bed isn't just for rice. We're gonna put the rice in here. We're gonna put some sorghum in here, which is also new to us kind of. We planted it before, but it didn't do well. So we're gonna try it again. And then we are gonna leave space for some melons that we've got started in the house. Now I'm sure those melons are going to have some amaranth growing up through them because that's where we planted it last year. And it's hard to get rid of once you plant it, but that's okay. It's a great seed. People use it as a grain to plant. And if you haven't seen our video on how to plant and harvest amaranth, click on the link at the top of the screen. All right, let's get our silage tarp off. We're gonna plant our rice. We're also going to plant our sorghum. And I'll show you how we are going to manipulate the soil just a little bit to start. So as you can see behind me, we've added some good green manure that cover crop itself as it's broken down and added itself into the soil. And then the microbiology underneath that silage tarp has come up and eaten it and broken it down. Additionally, while that cover crop was growing, it was adding nitrogen into this bed. So we don't want to disturb the microbiology that much at all. I've got just a garden rake here and I'm just gonna lightly scuff up the top of the soil. And as you can see behind me, I don't know if you can see that giant ant hill. We're gonna have to do something about that. Luckily, that's down in the area where the melons are gonna be planted, so I don't have to worry about it tonight, planting the rice. I do need to get myself what's called a collinear hoe, and that's gonna make things a little bit easier with weeding, but it'll also give me the ability to drag it and make rows for things like the sorghum in plots like this. But make sure when you're doing this, you don't go too deep, maybe about an inch, because you don't want to disturb that network of biology under the soil that's going to help your plants thrive. If this hill was not under the tarp, this would probably be about a foot tall right now. And you can see for scale, my hand, I'm about to touch it, it's about three feet wide this way and two feet wide that way. Those are Texas ants for you. Everything's bigger in Texas. So what I'm doing is I'm just loosening the top inch of soil by chopping at it with my rake. And that's gonna just soften it up a little bit. You can see that cover crop is actually not completely broken down yet, but we're not gonna let it go to waste. So let me talk for a second about upland rices. This one is called Duborskian and it's from Russia. So with upland rices, it's what the name implies. They do not need a water paddy like traditional rices do to grow. They do grow in drier, higher plains. So for us here, even though we do have a lot of water in the spring, it does get very hot and dry in the summertime. This should do perfect. I've had a couple of friends in the area have success with this. Now for rices, you are supposed to start transplants. And we did start quite a few in the house, but I don't have much room in my growing section. And I did have a lot of other things to get out into the garden. So this year it's an experiment. Maybe next year I will expand that. So let's get these in the ground and then I am going to also plant some seeds. So with this rice, you wanna plant it 10 to 12 inches apart. And these growing containers are nice because it creates this nice little plug. And usually you can plant two pieces of rice to each plug. So that works just perfectly. So we're just gonna get it in the ground here, 10 to 12 inches apart, and we're good to go. So like I mentioned before, those cover crops are so beneficial for the soil. When you're killing them off, those roots are decomposing in the soil and they are leaving a void 
uh, an air void down in the soil and they've already broken up that soil while they've been growing. So now your soil is softer and fluffier. And if you've got a harder, more compact soil, they're gonna help to break that soil down and add to it, obviously, with the breakdown of their own organic matter into the soil when you kill them off. So it's always a win-win to put cover crops over your garden and always keep something growing in the soil. Now we have all of our rice in, let's put our sorghum in the ground and then button everything up. So I'm really excited to put sorghum in the ground again this year. Sorghum can be processed down and used as a syrup. So we don't have any maple trees down here in Texas, so I'm not making one of my favorite things in the world that's pure maple syrup. So I need to go the Southern route and make some sorghum syrup. And of course we'll have honey from our bees, but having something extra that's sweet also on the homestead is great too. Now the way to plant these is a foot apart, one and a half inches deep under the soil. But in each spot that you plant, you want to drop three or four seeds. The germination rate can be a little iffy and you're gonna get hopefully 75% germination on it and have three good sorghum stalks from one of your planting spots. Now, of course, this is different than planting commercially. So those commercial planters are planting it in rows, usually with one seed or so. This is different, this is for a home garden, and we're gonna try our best to yield some very beautiful sorghum plants to make into that syrup. So of the five upland rices that I know about, this was the only one that I could find for sale. So I will put the link to this in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, it really helps out. We have these t-shirts that are linked below the video. We have men's, women's, and kids. And then of course, we have links to all the other things that we use and recommend here on our homestead. Now go click on this video right here, which shows you how we built our garden beds in our greenhouse. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.